In a time when major international carriers began to develop a variety of corporate airline alliances, the first, but most short-lived of these fledgling cooperation deals, was the Wings Alliance of the mid-1990s, a scheme piloted initially by partners KLM and Northwest Airlines, which would see the addition of several other carriers throughout the latter half of the decade, only for the entire project to collapse in a whirlwind of controversy by the turn of the new millennium. While individual corporate alliances within the civil airline world have existed since as early as the 1930s, with certain carriers providing code-sharing and bilateral agreements for the joint operation of their services, the modern airline alliance, which sprung up rapidly in the 1990s, enlarged the concept by taking under its influence several airlines which allow for multiple corporate and traveller benefits, including cost-saving through shared facilities and staff, financial support for each member of the alliance from their partners, lower prices for customers due to lower operational costs, and the shared use of airport lounges, fast-track access, faster mileage rewards, and round-the-world tickets for passengers among the Alliance members. The roots of what would become the Wings Alliance began on June 19, 1989, when Northwest Airlines, one of America's largest carriers, was acquired by Wings Holdings at a cost of $121 per share, or approximately $3.5 billion overall, the Wings Holding Company being an investment group organized by Al Chechi and Gary Wilson, and included among its investors the Dutch flag carrier KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Frederick V. Malek, Richard Blum Associates, and the Bankers Trust New York Corporation. The acquisition of the airline, which was completed on August 4th, making Northwest Airlines a privately held corporation for the first time since 1941, with Al Chechi becoming chairman of the firm and Fred Malek its president. The cost of purchasing the Northwest Airlines company, however, was one that presented a heavy burden for the various investors who had backed the Wings holding firm. And in order to cover the debt, Northwest was heavily stripped by the management, which included the sale of a large portion of its fleet to leasing companies rather than providing in-house maintenance and financing, and the offloading of company property across its vast global network, such as the Northwest Airlines headquarters in Tokyo. This coming amid proposals to thoroughly upgrade the service and customer satisfaction of the airline by way of a $442 million improvement program among its aspirations being the adoption of a brand new livery designed by Landor Associates of San Francisco, who would also develop the iconic 1985 livery of the post-privatization British Airways, and would consist of a red, grey and white colour scheme affectionately dubbed the bowling shoe. Just as Northwest was recovering though, the commercial aviation industry was completely upturned by the influence of the 1991 Gulf War, during which the oil wells of Kuwait was set alight by the retreating forces of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, and thus resulted in an oil price spike that not only made fuel more expensive, but meant the cost of living was also increased and thereby caused fewer people to fly regularly, Northwest attempting to redress the balance by way of forming a corporate alliance with the ailing Hawaiian Airlines, which was teetering on bankruptcy due to a mixture of the recession and its investment in routes that didn't make the profits which had been originally envisaged, Northwest eventually acquiring a 25% share in the company while also taking control of all its Australian route authority. Unfortunately, losses continued to spiral, and in the face of its own bankruptcy during 1993, Northwest was able to sign an agreement with employee groups to endure three years of wage cuts, while at the same time undertaking a comprehensive overhaul of its domestic and international route system so as to focus on more profitable services and strategic assets, with most non-hub domestic routes, including mini-hub schedules at Washington and Milwaukee, being abandoned so as to focus on hub-based flying, while the airline's base in Seoul and its newly established Australian routes were dismantled so as to place a greater emphasis on services to Japan. Northwest's instability, however, was looked upon as a golden opportunity by Wings Holdings investor KLM, who had acquired a 20% share in Northwest Airlines during the buyout to expand its operations further into the American market through a corporate alliance, KLM being no stranger to prospective tie-ups with other airlines, as in 1958, the company had attempted to form a group with Air France, Alitalia and Lufthansa called Air Union or Europe Air, which would have replicated the merging of the three national carriers of Sweden, Denmark and Norway to form the Scandinavian Airlines System or SAS, but ultimately failed to materialise when KLM left the union in 1959, followed in 1981 by a potential merger of the three Benelux flag carriers, Luxair of Luxembourg, KLM of the Netherlands and Sabina of Belgium, to form Air Benelux and a possible merger in October 1991 with British Airways, all of which ultimately came to naught when Sabina vetoed the former merger proposal, and the latter when British Airways broke off discussions in February 1992. 
Another ambitious alliance attempt by KLM came later in 1994, when the airline led a prospective group christened Alcazar, which, through the formation of KLM alongside members SAS, Finnair, Swissair, and Austrian Airlines, would have become the second largest airline in Europe based on its cumulative network and traffic behind British Airways. The Alcazar deal being predicated on the need for European carriers, as part of the wider European Union, to provide multiple hubs accessible for Alliance passengers, rather than forcing them through individual airports and thus inviting overcapacity, the Alcazar deal ultimately failing when Finnair opted out of the scheme, while legal and political hurdles, including accusations of monopolising on the European domestic air market, killed off any further prospects, although Lufthansa and SAS would continue to maintain Alcazar's original initiative through a close cooperation agreement that would eventually form the basis of Star Alliance. During December 1992, though, as KLM was, at the time, partially owned by the state, the Dutch government saw it in their interest to reach an accord with the United States as to an open skies agreement with the Netherlands, which would allow KLM and any other Dutch carrier to fly to any point in America, and allowed US carriers to fly to any point in the Netherlands, an arrangement which would present KLM with the ability to drain traffic from surrounding airline networks and route it via a European superhub at their home base of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. While through the Equity Alliance KLM had shared with Northwest since the 1989 buyout, US antitrust immunity was granted, which allowed Northwest Airlines to suspend its non-strategic transatlantic routes in order to place a greater emphasis on hub-to-hub -hub operations between Detroit and Amsterdam. On January 20th, 1993, Northwest and KLM announced their first major steps towards integrating operations, including the creation of what was known as the Seal of Partnership, which was applied to the airliners and apparel of both carriers in the form of a roundel upon which was displayed the logos of the partner airlines with the words Worldwide Reliability, Northwest and KLM spending the remainder of the year ratifying their new corporate alliance by expanding code share services to over 30 Northwest destinations in North America and over 30 KLM destinations in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, coordinating their world perks and flying blue frequent flyer programs and thereby creating the most expansive free travel program in the airline industry, combining and expanding their vacation package programs beginning with world vacations packages to Europe, and commencing KLM Northwest joint operations on all flights between the United States and Europe from December 7, 1993, the same day that Wings Holdings, the parent company of Northwest Airlines, was renamed to the Northwest Airlines Corporation. From February 15, 1994, Northwest and KLM introduced World Business Class, a roomier and enhanced international business class service offered at a regular business class price making them the first airlines from two different countries to offer a joint international service product. The success of marrying the expansive domestic and international network of both airlines, creating what was essentially the largest airline in the world, the open skies agreement forged between the Dutch and American governments, and the subsequent traffic drain that saw more passengers being routed via the hub at Amsterdam, rather than other European airports, being the catalyst for what would become the later trend for similar airline alliances throughout the latter half of the decade starting with urgent pleas being made by flag carriers Air France and Lufthansa to their respective governments to create their own bilateral agreements with the United States, so as to allow for similar hubs to be formed at airports such as Munich and Paris Charles de Gaulle. Eventually, in 1996, Germany became the first nation after the Netherlands to open a bilateral open skies agreement in the same manner, followed shortly thereafter by the Czech Republic, Italy, Portugal, Slovakia, Malta and Poland this allowing for the first competitive airline alliances to be formed, commencing on May 14, 1997, with the formal announcement of Star Alliance, which emerged from the aforementioned cooperation agreement between Lufthansa and SAS, and would comprise three additional founding members on top of the German and Scandinavian flag carriers, United Airlines, Thai Airways International and Air Canada, later joined by Brazilian national carrier Varig, Anset Australia, Air New Zealand and Al Nippon Airways. Next to be formed was the One World Alliance, which was announced on September 21, 1998, and was born through a similarly long-held cooperation deal between British Airways and American Airlines, the closeness of which nearly resulted in a merger between the two carriers during 1994, American Airlines bringing with it Canadian Airlines International, which was, at the time, Canada's second largest airline and one in which it held a controlling share, the other two founding members of One World being Cathay Pacific and Qantas, who were later joined by Finnair, Iberia, Lanchili, and Aer Lingus. The last of the three new airline alliances to be forged was SkyTeam on June 22, 2000, which was again conceived through a pre-existing cooperation deal, this time between Air France and Delta Airlines, 
who had been working closely with each other since 1999, the other founding members of this alliance being Aeromexico, Korean Air, and CSA Czech Airlines, while also establishing its own cargo airline alliance arm, christened Skyteam Cargo, which comprised the cargo divisions of those carriers which formed part of the wider Skyteam's group. Back with the KLM Northwest Alliance, their pattern of operations continued to grow, as each firm poured greater amounts of investment into their respective transatlantic corridors, introducing as part of their 1995 summer schedule twice-daily non-stop services between the Amsterdam hub and both the Detroit and Minneapolis St. Paul hubs, followed shortly afterwards by a non-stop Memphis to Amsterdam route utilizing MD-11 trijets and Boeing 767-300s, the immense profits being garnered through the joint venture, allowing for KLM to buy back the shares owned by the Dutch government reducing the state influence on the carrier from 38.2% in 1995 to 25% by December 1996, as well as continuing to buy large shares in other airlines across the globe, including a 26% share of Kenya Airways in January 1996, a 30% share in Norwegian airline Brathens, and the outright purchase of British regional airline Air UK, which would be rebranded from 1998 as KLM UK. Come 1997, Northwest Airlines had announced that it achieved year-end earnings of $536.1 million, the largest annual net income in its history, and from September of that year, declared, alongside KLM, a change to their commission structure, capping domestic and international commissions at 8%, followed five days later by the signing of a 10-year global joint venture agreement between the two carriers that would see them agree to expand their current area of cooperation for scheduling, inventory management, passenger processing, computer reservation systems, and frequent flyer databases, while also streamlining sales and marketing, purchasing, ground handling, and catering, each airline gaining a seat on the other's board of directors, and KLM selling back to Northwest the 20% share it had owned since the buyout of 1989, KLM's 30% share purchase in Brathens, also seeing Northwest and the Norwegian regional carrier announce a cooperative marketing partnership to provide enhanced travel benefits to and from Scandinavia. Such was the success of the KLM Northwest Alliance that for the 1997 fiscal year, Northwest reported profits of $597 million, breaking the previous year's record, and for their efforts the two carriers were awarded the Airline of the Year Award by influential US trade magazine Air Transport World. This achievement commemorated through the repainting of Northwest Airlines Douglas DC-10 November 237 November Whiskey into a hybrid KLM Northwest Airlines livery, with the Northwest Airlines livery partially painted down the port side and the KLM livery down the starboard side, Northwest moving to increase its own influence on the American market through codeshare agreements and a global alliance agreement with Continental Airlines to purchase Air Partners stock. Trouble brewed, however, when KLM began motions as to turning the corporate arrangement it had with Northwest Airlines into its own airline alliance as per the likes of Star Alliance, and in December 1997 signed a close cooperation agreement with Italian state airline Alitalia, allowing KLM executives to take charge of a passenger joint venture, while an Alitalia representative would head the cargo businesses, later followed in November 1998 by the signing of a master cooperation agreement pertinent to a proposed long-term alliance which, together with Northwest Airlines, would become informally known as the Wings Alliance. This being formally ratified and saw Alitalia brought into the KLM Northwest tie-up from May 1999. Much of the reason as to why KLM had entertained Alitalia's entry into the alliance was primarily due to the development of Milan Malpensa as the company's main hub, replacing the heavily constrained Milan Lenate Airport as the gateway to the city, but also seeing the entirety of Alitalia's fleet maintenance be transferred to this site from their current facility at Rome Fiumicino, the addition of a second European super hub to the KLM Northwest Alliance, meaning it would not only free up capacity at Amsterdam, but also allow the prospective long term Wings Alliance to be competitive with the likes of Star Alliance, with founding member Lufthansa operating multiple hubs at Frankfurt and Munich, while Alitalia was willing to join the alliance in part to allow for expanded operations into North America, but also to help levy up the company's spiralling financial situation after years of corruption and mismanagement had pushed the state airline to the edge of collapse. As part of the deal to complete the Malpensa superhub, KLM presented Alitalia with 100 million euros towards the project, and on October 25, 1998, the Italian state airline transferred all of its operations from Rome to Milan, enabling up to 488 additional aircraft movements and 42,000 extra passengers a day to be accommodated by the new facility, which, by the end of the year, was handling 5.92 million passengers, an increase of more than 2 million over the previous year's figure. Alitalia, as part of the Wings Alliance, 
been granted antitrust immunity by the Department of Transport on December 3, 1999, while elsewhere, Northwest Airlines continued to improve its corporate connection with Continental Airlines, with a view that this carrier would become the fourth member of the Wings Alliance at some point in the future. Other interested parties, including Malaysia Airlines, Air China, Air Europa, and Garuda Indonesia. However, with the induction of Alitalia into the Wings Alliance being squarely centered around the opening of Malpensa as its second superhub behind Amsterdam, problems rapidly arose when it was found that the newly expanded airport was not meeting its planned traffic targets. With the efforts of the Italian government, Alitalia, and the public holding company managing Milan's airport, SEA, being unable to sway market forces in favor of this new facility. Customer appeal and legitimate interest of almost all the Italian and foreign carriers clashing with the concept of a unique hub in northern Italy, exacerbated further by environmental concerns being raised due to noise levels on the surrounding communities and from the poor road connections to areas other than Milan. Additionally, a large stipulation of the Alitalia entry into the Wings Alliance was that the Italian government, which held a 55% share in the carrier, would sell this to KLM and thereby make the airline a private company and potentially see a future merger between the Dutch and Italian flag carriers, combining both their passenger and cargo activities. The anticipated earnings reaped from this partnership being approximately $427 million by 2003. The failure of Milan Malpensa to recoup its significant upgrade costs, together with the upheaval of the Alitalia move to this new facility, seeing the airline make a significant loss for the 1999 fiscal year, with Commerz Bank, one of Alitalia's financial backers, revealing that the Italian government had entertained offers from multiple international firms as to selling their strategic stake in Alitalia, the primary candidate for this takeover being the S Air Group, parent company of Swiss Air, who, as part of their own aggressive expansion during the 1990s, held an 85% share in the Belgian national carrier Sabina. The inability of Malpensa to meet its targets, combined with the Italian government failing to keep up its end of the KLM Alitalia deal, promptly led to the Dutch flag carrier terminating the agreement on April 28, 2000, citing the fact that continuing to pour investment into the ailing Italian flag carrier was having detrimental effects on their own operations and thereby making them financially vulnerable. The constrained profit margins being caused by the Alitalia deal, forcing the Dutch airline to slash 2,000 jobs in March 2000 so as to balance the losses, and seeing a 30% fall in the company's share price, the announcement of Alitalia being dropped from the prospective Wings Alliance seeing KLM's share price rise 3.4%, while Alitalia's shares fell by 12 points from 2.19 to 2.07 on the Borsa Italiana, the Italian stock exchange in Milan, although the airline, thanks to the antitrust immunity it had received as part of the deal, was allowed to fly in conjunction with Northwest Airlines from Rome and Milan to Detroit from April 2nd. The fallout of the Alitalia deal was essentially the death knell for any prospect of the Wings Alliance as while the corporate connection between KLM and Northwest Airlines remained as strong as ever, their partnership had largely been overtaken by the more financially secure packs of SkyTeam, OneWorld and Star Alliance, KLM continuing to be tied up in litigation relating to the failed deal with Alitalia until 2003, whereupon a one-off payment of 175 million euros was ultimately settled upon and was paid by KLM so as to end the costly lawsuits being filed with the European Commission. The airline also considering during that same year another potential tie-up with British Airways, but this deal was again shot down due to the intervention of the US Department of Transport, who threatened that, if British Airways and KLM were to work together, it would seek to renegotiate the US traffic rights of both airlines, as Britain had not signed an open-sky bilateral agreement with the USA in the same manner as the Netherlands. Northwest Airlines, meanwhile, continued to court Continental as a prospective partner, and both companies worked closely together throughout 2000 and 2001 to align their operations, including first-class lounges and a cooperative marketing agreement in association with Delta Airlines, which would connect the three carriers' domestic and international networks and include code-sharing, frequent flyer program reciprocity, and a reciprocal airport lounge program, this arrangement being ratified on March 31, 2003 by American regulators. The end for the Wings Alliance would finally come in late 2003, when it was announced that, in order to strengthen their position within the global aviation market, KLM and Air France would merge to form the new Air France KLM Group, a deal which was ratified in February 2004 by the European Commission under certain concessions, including both carriers having to give up 100 slots in airports to promote price competition following the merger, the tie-up between Air France and KLM creating the world's largest airline in terms of revenues and allowing Air France access to 40 new routes and KLM access to 90 new routes, although the merger did not disrupt the corporate relationship being held with Northwest Airlines.
On May 5, 2004, at a special ceremony held at Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport, the Air France KLM Group was formally established, with a resultant growing annual improvement of between 385 and 495 million euros being gained on the group's consolidated operating income, while network optimization, the improved organization of passenger and cargo operations, and an expanded offering of maintenance services, as well as cost reductions in purchasing, sales distribution and IT applications, meant corporate inefficiency and subsequent overhead would be reduced. In the end, in order to fully secure the cooperation of the Air France KLM merger, and with Northwest, and by extension Continental Airlines, still being tightly knit with these carriers through what was formerly the Wings Alliance, all of the carriers joined Air France as part of the SkyTeam Alliance on September 13, 2004. KLM and Air France remaining as part of the SkyTeam Alliance to this day, as well as maintaining their merger, while on April 15, 2008, Delta Airlines and Northwest announced they would conduct a corporate merger to create the largest carrier in the world, Northwest having been pushed into an unfavorable position following its filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on September 14, 2005, despite far-reaching money-saving initiatives, the Northwest Airlines name eventually disappearing into history on January 31, 2010. With the prospect of Delta and Northwest merging to create the world's largest airline, Continental Airlines, fearing the loss of its position on the American commercial aviation market, subsequently moved to establish stronger ties with Star Alliance member United Airlines, and in June 2008, the two carriers signed a pact that would link their international networks and share technology and passenger perks, which was described by contemporary observers as a virtual merger between the two carriers, Continental being obliged to leave SkyTeam in order to work alongside United and its other Star Alliance members during 2009, the formal announcement of a merger between United and Continental eventually being made on May 2, 2010 leading finally to the full absorption of Continental on March 3, 2012. In the end, the alliance of KLM and Northwest Airlines into what could have prospectively been the Wings Alliance illustrated the strength of corporate connections between two or more airlines through the provision of centralized superhubs in different continents, a streamlining of operations, the collaboration of assets such as frequent flyer programs and lounges, and integrated coach-sharing systems, thereby allowing for a far smoother passenger experience and thus creating incredible profits, as these many facets drew in significant numbers of prospective customers. Unfortunately, the Wings Alliance would never come to fruition in the same manner as other cooperation schemes such as SkyTeam, OneWorld and Star Alliance, as aside from failing to win over members early on once Northwest and KLM began working as closely as they did in the mid-1990s, the unreliable partnership of Alitalia illustrated the flaws of the corporate alliance philosophy, as the other partners were forced to invest heavily in maintaining the losses of the ailing member. And with little enthusiasm present for other carriers to climb onto the Wings Alliance project, far more lucrative deals could be found elsewhere through corporate mergers, thus rationalizing the global airline market and creating the modern commercial aviation scene of today.